Well, today is the 21st, I think, of February. I want to make a little video of something I've been thinking about for a while. I've made a couple videos on this, and I erased them. But while I'm standing still, I'm going to release this. Monday was President's Day. Our president goes over to Ukraine to get an unlimited amount, you know, to just keep pouring money into this nightmare that they've dragged us into. And on the same day, Vladimir Putin has a State of the Union address, so to speak, for the Russian people. It took two hours. I would suggest you go watch it and listen to it. And you tell me what everything he says, you tell me if it's wrong. It is amazing to me how many American people just blindly suck down the pablum that our government spits out about this. Now, let me give you a layman's view on this whole Ukraine Russia thing. Russia is a civilization vastly older than the United States. It is an extremely large country. It is so large that, and underpopulated by the way, underpopulated, that it has never really fully exploited its resources. You need to remember this was the, at one time in the world, there were only two nuclear powers. It was us and them. <clears throat> the Russian people as a people, as a whole, are probably the toughest, one of the toughest people on the planet. Why do I say that? Well, <clears throat> the majority of them live in the western part of, of the nation near Moscow because it's where... Traditionally, that's where their civilization or culture was always on the forefront, <clears throat> on the um, eastern edge of the Euro European sun subcontinent. <clears throat> so they're closely tied to Europe, and over the centuries, their monarchies that were there and stuff were connected to Germany and even England. And um, they're, uh, they are an Eastern and Western culture in some aspects. Traditionally speaking, they are uh, Russian Eastern Orthodox Christians. And even though that was the foothold of communism for 75 years, it never squashed the church. People just went underground with it. <clears throat> so basically, um, now, historically speaking, Russia was always in Ukraine. As a matter of fact, everybody in, in the Ukraine speaks Russian. There's not a lot of difference between these Eastern dialects. There's similarities in their words. I mean, even if you go to Poland and Romania, it, the, the language is close enough where you can pick things up. Okay, do you understand this? So Ukrainians, because they were, so part, they were part of the Soviet Union for so long and so part of the Russian Empire as a whole... For so long, they all speak Russian, but there are areas in Ukraine that are predominantly that are predominantly Russian that are more that identify more as Russian than Ukrainian. <clears throat> and um, and here's a little fun fact for you that the media doesn't tell you: um, the Ukrainians had a very large consist, uh, contingency of Nazis during World War II. And after Nazism was defeated in Europe, the Ukrainians never got rid of it. It stayed there. There's always been a bastion of, of Nazis in Ukraine. So when... <clears throat> so what happens? These are ethnic Ukrainians who are Nazis, right? So what they do is, because of this complex... Um, political social discourse that's been there for centuries the areas that are heavily populated by the Russians have been 
attacked and persecuted by the Ukrainian Nazis. And that is one of Putin's reasons for going in. Because they were always asking for help from the Russians. That's the truth. Look it up. It's the truth. The other part of this goes down to when, when, when the Soviet Union broke up in '91. They formed a, a, a they, they, they formed a pact with the Western nations, United States and Europe, not to uh, increase an Eastern expansion of NATO on their borders, which is understandable. They don't want missiles in Poland. They don't want missiles in Hungary. They don't want missiles in any of this former Soviet bloc nations. And they sure as hell don't want them in Ukraine. Well, back in nineteen, uh, back in 2014, the Clinton administration uh, had a coup in Ukraine and overthrew the pro, uh, pro-Russian <clears throat> leader there at the time and put a pro Western leader in, installed the pro-Western puppet master in there. And then the United States started using Ukraine as a giant laundering operation for nefarious things that so many of our politicians like to be involved with. And Putin over the years has warned NATO and the United States quit pushing into our borders. We won't tolerate it. We won't want nuclear weapons on our borders. It's no different than us with Canada or Mexico. You wouldn't. We had almost had a war over the Russians wanting to put missiles in Cuba. And in case you don't know, Cuba is very, very close to Florida. Very close to Florida. Now I understand a lot of people don't understand history, and a lot of under pe- a lot of people don't understand geography. I'm willing to bet that a lot of people. The few people that are going to watch this would have a hard time finding where Ukraine is even on a map. The other reason why Russia decides that they want that part is because they wanted to go into Crimea and Peninsula because they need access to the oceans there. They need access because most of Russia is landlocked except for on the East Coast and then you have the North Pole. It's covered in ice half the year. Now, why am I saying this? Well, the point is, is Russia goes out, Putin goes out on TV for two hours, talks about their plan and what they plan on doing. <clears throat> and I listened to it, and I can't say anything the man said was wrong. And one of the things he did is he really hits the Russian people with the truth in saying the United States is a collapsing, the Western, Western Europe, Western United States is collapsing. They don't even know what a woman is anymore. And they are filled with pedophiles and what they're doing to children is criminal well you do you see what's going on in our nation what's being pushed every day what's being pushed in our public schools is he wrong europe is already they 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 have smoked on the crack pipe above globalism way too long you're dealing with a civilization state more than a political thing these are a people that have been around for thousands of years with a common language and a common culture. The United States is an amalgamation of bullshit and nonsense because we're too divided. And we're and it's getting worse. It's getting we're divided politically, ideologically, we're divided amongst so many ways, and you can't get everybody to agree on anything. You ain't gonna find that in Eastern Europe. You're not gonna find that in China. You're not going to find that in, in the eastern in, in eastern cultures. They they <clears throat> you're dealing with civilization states, uh, cultures and heritages that have been around for thousands of years longer before the United States was even uh, was wasn't even known that there was a Western Hemisphere outside of Europe. So what am I trying to say? Well, Ukraine wouldn't would have fallen a long time ago if our dirty little hands weren't involved in there pouring money and troops don't think for five minutes that there aren't troops on the ground there do you think the ukrainians who can't speak english can work english speaking machinery you think they can read the lettering on there there's the other part of this you're going to send them tanks you're going to send them advanced weapons do you think that our government wants that to fall in the hands of the russians though it probably already has through afghanistan by giving afghanistan to china we gave Afghanistan to China, and that all that 
$85 billion worth of equipment goes to get reverse engineered in China and in Russia because China and Russia are kind of allies, and so is Iran. And at the same time when we got this going on, the Iranians are on the verge of, of enriching plutonium. They're going to have a nuke real soon. You don't hear any of that talked about from our government either. So my take on this is real simple. Russia's not going to lose this. They, they are not going to lose this. Putin's not going to lose this thing in Ukraine. So we got a president over there giving him more and more money. If Ukraine was winning, they wouldn't need all the money. They wouldn't need constant more and more equipment, more and more equipment. And despite what you see on YouTube, despite what you see from our media, because they're all lying to us. That's going to be a big shocker to way too many of us here. Way too many. It's going to be a big shocker for way too many people when Russia wins this. <clears throat> and it wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me in five minutes if he, if if Putin decided to use a tactical nuke in some way or shape or form. We should really listen to what he says, because they're not. He's not going to take no for an answer. And if he feels that's the only way to gain ground, he might just do that. And I can't blame him. We've been playing around in Ukraine. If you don't think we are, you are sadly informed, misinformed. You're not paying attention to what politicians of ours have got sons and daughters making a fortune over there in some shady business dealings. Am I pro-Putin? I'm pro-people. We should be living in a world where we're not at each other's throats. We have more in common with the Russians than we sure have with the Chinese. We have more of a common ancestry and a common culture with, with, with Russia than we do anywhere in Asia. A hell of a lot more than India or anything east. I should say in that part west, far west like by, from our standards. But you need to remember this. Russia has just as many natural resources, if not more, than the United States. They've got timber, they've got natural gas, they've got oil, they've got coal. And unlike the United States, they aren't going to play this stupid woke game. If they, it comes down to it, and they're going to fire, they need to use coal plants, they're going to fire them up, they're not going to think anything of it. They're not going to think anything up of building more nuclear plants and so on and so forth. They are not going to play that game where Western Europe will be, this stu- be, be involved in this stupid cl- crisis that has to do with the seasons that we endure every year with temperatures. They're not going to play that game. The one thing that they... Now, and, and so even though they're vastly underpopulated, those, those people are the toughest, strongest people in the world. They were never conquered by an outside force. <clears throat> the winters, they are, they are seasoned winter warrior veterans. They know how to fight warfare under the most harsh conditions that defeated Napoleon, that de- de- defeated... Uh, Germany during World War II. Don't underestimate these people. Defeat is not in their blood. And they are a, a more of a homogeneous or homo, homo, uh, uh, congealed society where they're one. They're one people, one culture, one belief system. When, you are, when you're like that, you're unstoppable. This is what made the Germans difficult. It's what made the Russians difficult. It's what made the J- Japanese difficult. But what makes the United States weak is the division within us. And we have never been more divided, and I don't think we will ever get back to the way it's supposed to be because we're too busy uh, fighting each other based on the color of our skin. And now we have a new religion rising up in our midst under the Democrat Party with wokeism and the tenets of being woke. <clears throat> Russia's going to win. And get ready for this because as soon as that ground, they've had an unusually warm winter in Ukraine. Which means you can't move tanks and artillery and stuff real well over soggy, muddy ground. And the Russians know it and they're not going to get bogged down in it. They were waiting for a really hard winter and it didn't happen. Which makes you wonder if we don't have, uh, uh, if we haven't weaponized uh, weather technology to alter the weather. Makes you wonder. Because Ukraine is on the same latitude kind of that we're at. And they are in the same kind of grain-growing 
region of the earth, the United States and the Midwest are at. And we've had an, a, the most mild winter I can ever remember in my entire life of living. And that's going on over there too. So I don't think if you're playing with a weather, weather modification device, maybe you have to do it across a particular level of the earth. So you end up with, a mild, you end up with mild weather to prevent something. I'm just throwing that out there. So, okay, food for thought. Just remember, the Russians are not going to lose this and be prepared for what's to come because anything goes with this. Till next time.